Hello and a very good morning. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's start with the top stories this morning. Budget session of Parliament comes to an end. Rajya Sabha bids farewell to 53 members on the last day. Campaigning to end for elections in Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry today. Congress delegation meets Election Commission, seeks ban on Prime Minister's campaigning in Kerala over the Somalia remark. Prime Minister Modi pitches for permanent solution to fishermen issue during talks with Lankan President. Two leaders also discuss ways to boost trade. Journalist shot dead in Sivan in Bihar. NDA delegation meets president, seeks imposition of central rule over alleged lawlessness in the state. And fresh trouble for Nepal government. Madhesi party is to restart indefinite protest today, demanding more rights for them. Well, the fierce two-month-long campaigning for the 16th May Assembly polls in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry will come to an end today. An almost three crore strong electorate will cast their votes to elect 140 lawmakers in the Kerala Assembly. The voters will have to choose from uh, 1,203 candidates, of which 109 are women. Tamil Nadu has as many as 3,776 candidates in the field. An electorate above 5 crore will be casting their votes to elect 234 lawmakers in the state assembly. Meanwhile, an electorate of above 9 lakh will cast their votes to elect 30 MLAs in the Puducherry Assembly. The Union Territory has 344 candidates in the fray, including 21 females and one transgender. Results for the state assembly elections will be declared on the 19th of May. So the intense campaigning in uh, all the three southern states will finally come to an end today. During the election, electioneering process, we've seen a fierce war of words between both the Congress and the BJP. Particularly in Kerala, which gained prominence, the Prime Minister during one of the election rallies, uh, in fact, uh, compared the infant mortality rate in the scheduled tribes in Kerala to that of Somalia, triggering a, a war of words with the Congress party. And to get more insight on that story, let's go across straight to our correspondent, Ravindra Singh Sharan. So, Ravindra, last day of campaigning today, hectic day expected with the parties making one last-ditch effort to woo the voters. Yeah, that's right, Tina. Today is the last day. In fact, a couple of more hours to go before the... Uh, electioneering and the most important part of the election process, the campaigning comes to a standstill at 6 p.m. today in the evening. All the election political parties are trying to woo the voters in the, ma in the last hours. They are trying to reach them to the ma mass media. Hmm. We are right now standing in Tanjavur, the most important district for uh, uh, DMK party, the DMK patriarch, nonagenarian, six-time chief minister. Uh, M. Karunanidhi has been contesting from... Tiruvaru, 50 kilometers away from this constituency. Hmm. He has been representing this constituency for record 12 times in the uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Assembly. He has been uh, representing this constituency since 1956. Hmm. This is a record in itself. Hmm. And uh, we have seen a lot of new developments in the election. This election in the future will be known for maximum female candidates' participation in the fray. 327 female candidates are participating in this election, hmm. though the number is quite low as compared to the uh, gents candidates. Hmm. But this is a historical maximum number since the independence, since uh, the election process starts in Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. Moreover, this election will also be known for some nadir points when more than 100 crores of rupees has been seized by the election commission, the different teams of election commission, and still hmm. they are trying to uh, uh, apprehend the people who are trying to influence the voter through the money power. Yes. Ma ma many teams has already been working out. Hmm. Uh, the teams of uh, police, the teams of uh, uh, 
excise commission and uh, different teams are already working on. Hmm. Beside this, we have seen a lot of high and lows in this election when the AIA DMK has accused the DMK for uh, the Kaveri water dispute. They have held them responsible for the Kaveri water dispute. They are saying the, the level which the allegations which has been leveled against the DMK is that in 1969, hmm. when a pact was signed between the Karnataka and the Tamil Nadu for the mm. sharing of Kaveri River. The details has not been in the, uh, divulged so far, mm. which resulting today in the huge water crisis. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the DMK is accusing the chief minister of insouciant, imperturbable and aloof behavior, which she has shown at mm -hmm. the time of Chennai floods in the last November mm -hmm. when almost all the important cities of mm -hmm. Tamil Nadu were under the water. Mm -hmm. Millions of pro uh, property, rupees of property has been washed away. Many precious life has been lost. The DMK is saying mm -hmm. when the people of Tamil Nadu require her most, she was not available to share the grief of That's the right. people. Mm -hmm. so Besides, the, the, B, the BJP is accusing both the arch rival DMK and AIDMK hmm. for not helping the poor people of Tamil Nadu. The BJP is accusing that the the the, uh, the, the dream which has been seen by um, Ramaswamy Periyar for the Dravidian movement that has not been fulfilled by both the parties. Hmm. And they are and the Prime Minister himself is. Uh, the Prime Minister himself is leading the campaign for the BJP. Today hmm. also, more than a dozen ministers are camping in hmm. Tamil Nadu hmm. to woo the voter in the last, last couple of hours. That's also, right. the, the main accusation leveled by the Prime Minister and the BJP is that uh, the DMK, both the parties, Dravidian fold and parties, were failed to give any kind of Pollyanna and sanguination to the investors. And that resulted that no... Investors came here, no mm. investment came here, no new factories mm. had been set up in the last couple mm. of many years, couple of decades. Mm. And this is the problem which the people are facing. Unemployment is a huge issue here. Mm. And mm. that's the reason that exodus of most of the youth is going outside in search of uh, employment. Mm. And mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. Ravindra, you pointed out several interesting issues like the Chennai floods, corruption, a massive unemployment. So that brings me to a question that, you know, Tamil Nadu is one state you know, where uh, a lot of freebie culture is witnessed when uh, at, at the time of polls. So this time also, both parties in their manifesto have promised a lot of free things to voters. Do you think this time around, the voters will rise above the freebie politics and vote for issues like corruption, unemployment, as you pointed out, and also the Chennai floods? All the political pundits are waiting for the results to come. Then only it will be decided whether the people of Tamil Nadu has risen up from the freebies and they have casted their vote for the welfare of the whole state. Hmm. This is the, uh, the million dollar question everybody is waiting for. But That's we have it. seen in the last history, in the 2011 elections, when the r r manifesto of the AIA DMK came out, she, the, the chief, uh, AIA DMK chief has offered a lot of freebies at that time and that was a... The political pundits are saying that the election manifesto of 2011 was very crucial hmm. in, in shaping the uh, result of the election. Hmm. This time also, both the, the smaller parties like the PMK, the DMDK and the BJP has launched a scathing attack on both the Dravidian folder parties as they are, they are giving a lot of... They are, they have been leveled allegations that they are giving a lot of freebies and mm. not trying to not trying to give an employment to the people. Mm. They fail to give an employment to the people. Mm. As I told you that no, basically no industries had been set up here in the last couple of decades. Mm. And this is the one of the most reason, uh, big reason that the people are now depending on the freebies. Mm. Also, when we, we try to spoke to the chief minister, what we got is that she, the AIDMK is a pro-poor party mm -hmm. and these are the important things which they have to give to the poor. Hmm. She said that she don't want to us up crores of rupees and she hmm. has leveled allegation of corruption hmm. towards the DMK hmm. party. She said that DMK, the whole family of DMK is involved in corruption in 2G. Their name was mentioned. Ravindra, and a lot of corruption practices, malpractices. They do were, stay uh, with us. We're in, also being joined they were by in power in the Suman. last UP government. Ravindra, do stay with us. In fact, we're also being joined by Akhilesh Suman, who's joining us uh, from the other state, uh, pole-bound state of Kerala. Akhilesh, a very good morning. So just ahead of the polling day, Akhilesh, Kerala has hogged national limelight. Multiple reasons behind that. First, it was the Prime Minister Somalia remark. Then we saw a war of words between Sushma Swaraj and Uman Chandi. But what's the local scenario like? 
are these issues being discussed with such prominence among the local people as well? Yeah, see, the natural mindset in the Kerala, what is happening that uh, after every five years, people think seriously to change the government. And this is how they try to keep a tab on the government so that the government doesn't do, go out of power. Hmm. So it, it is the tradition for uh, every every election after the independence has taken place. So, so Kerala people are, are thinking towards change, but the issues, whether they will change, whether they will not change, it will come only after the polls are there. Congress, while Congress is taking up the issue of large-scale development in the state, hmm. especially in the infrastructure sector, hmm. left is telling that there has been no development as far as the manufacturing sector is concerned. All and right. BJP is telling that both LDF and LDF, uh, LDF and UDF has failed to give full employment, hmm. and that is why they have been forced to migrate to Gulf country and many other countries hmm. in search of employment and where there is a instability in those regions, hmm. they have to come back forcefully. Hmm. And when they come back after the migration, when they come back uh, to Kerala again, it becomes very difficult hmm. to adjust them, readjust them in the mainstream of society. Hmm. So BJP is trying to bank on this thing that because of uh, LDF and UDF uh, rule, hmm. uh, perennially uh, one after another, hmm. the people could not gain employment in the state and that that uh, that scenario has to be changed once uh, after NDA comes to power. That's but right. Even when NDA has never been in power in the state, never mm. has opened any either Lok Sabha membership or Vidhan Sabha membership in the state, but if you see the propaganda of BJP, you will feel that it is no less than any other party other like mm. UDF and NDA. Rather, you will feel that NDA is far better as far as mm. propaganda machinery is concerned. Mm. So the whole effort of the NDA is trying to that it should make inroads in the Kerala society. It should get some seats and it should ensure that there should be a hung assembly in the state so that mm. BJP can get some, uh, some say in the whole governance process. That's you know. right, Akhilesh. And Ravindra, many thanks for joining us. For, uh, and giving us those details. We'll keep coming back to you in the uh, upcoming days until the elections take place in both states. Moving on, the Congress has urged the Election Commission to prohibit Prime Minister Narendra Modi from campaigning in Kerala for the Assembly elections. A party delegation met the Election Commission and made the demand over the Prime Minister's remarks comparing child death ratio among the scheduled tribes in the state with that of Somalia. Now, the Congress has said that the Prime Minister has distorted facts which amounted to violation of the model code in a memorandum, the Congress said that the Prime Minister has dented the dignity and image of the electorate as well as the elected government in the state. How can the Prime Minister of the country mislead people for cheap political gain during an election campaign by trotting out such false facts, creating a non-level playing field? People tend to believe a Prime Minister more than ordinary people. And we have therefore, in the end, asked the Election Commission to take three very categorical steps. Number one, to declare that the Prime Minister of India has violated the Model Code of Conduct, Clause 2 in particular, to pass strictures against him and to prohibit him from campaigning in Kerala at any point of time from here onwards. Shifting focus from elections to parliament, Rajya Sabha was adjourned sine die on Friday, bringing an end to the second half of the budget session of parliament. Now, in this session, the Rajya Sabha worked for 69 hours and 15 sittings and also passed 12 bills. The 239th session of the Rajya Sabha commenced on 25th of April and came to a close on Friday, that is today. The upper house passed or returned 12 government bills, but 19 hours were also lost on issues like political crisis in Uttarakhand, allegations of corruption in Augusta Westland chopper deal and anomalies pointed out by CAG in KG Basin Gas Project in Gujarat. During this session, 81 zero-hour submissions were made, while 225 start questions and 2,391 unstart questions were answered. Members also expressed concern on matters of urgent public interest through 37 special mentions. Private members introduced six bills. The House also had two short-duration discussions on drought and the Augusta Westland chopper deal. Transacting its main task of legislative business, the House during the session passed or returned 12 government bills which demonstrated the desirability of careful deliberation through available instrumentalities and the benefits accruing from it. 
The House also welcomed 30 newly elected or re-elected members, while it bid farewell to 53 retiring members. The House was also informed by the Chair about the resignation of Vijay Malia and Pranav Pandya. 14 department-related parliamentary standing committees tabled respective reports. The House witnessed lively debate during the discussions on the working of the ministries of Health and Family Welfare and Human Resource Development. Notwithstanding the fact that a good amount of both legislative and non-legislative work was transacted, the proceedings of the House were occasionally disrupted. I have asked the Secretary General to make available the statistical information relating to this House. I take this opportunity to thank the Leader of the House, the Leader of the Opposition, the Ministers of Parliamentary Affairs, the Leader of various parties and groups, and the honorable members for the cooperation extended by them in the overall functioning of the House. The chair also made references to the passing away of sitting members Praveen Rashtrapal and four former members of the Rajya Sabha. This is Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And on the diplomatic front, Prime Minister Narendra Modi pitched for a permanent solution to the issue of frequent arrests of Indian fishermen by the Sri Lankan Navy. During his talks with Sri Lankan President Maitripala Shirisena on Friday, a range of other key matters, including ways to boost trade, were also discussed. Modi hosted a dinner for Shirisena, over which both the leaders discussed all major bilateral issues, particularly problems being faced by the Indian fishermen. The status of various economic projects being implemented by India in the island nation and steps to further increase trade and investment also figured in the discussion. Shirisena, who is on a two-day visit to India, will leave for Ujjain today to attend the Singhast Mahakum. He will be accompanied by Prime Minister Modi during the visit. The Sri Lankan president will also visit the famous Sachi Stoop in Madhya Pradesh. He will then go to Bengaluru and depart for Colombo in the evening. With that, we slip into a very short break here. Lots more coming up on the other side. Translation means converting knowledge into products useful for improving the quality of life. So we need to apply that knowledge to find solutions. And that is what we are trying to do you, you know, in this institute. Somebody who has understanding of biology, somebody who has understanding of medicine, somebody who has understanding of engineering. If a team is put together, can we then develop novel diagnostics? Watch Eureka with Dr. Sudhanshu Brati, Dean at Translational Health Science and Technology Institute, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Thanks for staying with us. Now, at a time when the debate over whether lawlessness or Jungle Raj, as it's called, has returned in Bihar, Another shocking incident of crime reported in Sivan district of the state. A senior journalist, Rajdev Ranjan, was shot dead Friday evening by unidentified men when he was going on his motorcycle to a fruit market. Surprisingly, the incident took place near a police station. Ranjan was rushed to the hospital, but he died on the way. The motive behind his murder is yet to be ascertained. Reports suggest Ranjan had been writing for a long time against lawbreakers of the area in Hindi daily Hindustan, of which he was the district chief. His killing has triggered a wave of protests by media persons in Bihar. Political slugfest has also begun once again. Gaya ka mamla shant bhi nahi hua tha. Abhi tak Mandurma Devi giriftar bhi nahi ho paai hai. Aur ek badi ghatna ghat gai hai. Hum sab log chintit hai. Aur sab log ke man mein ek hi dar laga raha tha ki kahi Bihar fir purani dinu ki or lot karna chala jai. Koi bhi aparadi ho. से 48 घंटों के अंदर हम गिरफ्तार करेंगे और इस तरह के भविष्य में घटना ना हो इसकी रोकने के लिए हर पुरजोर उपाय ये सरकार करेगी। And a similar incident took place in neighbouring Jharkhand as well within a span of 24 hours. Akhilesh Pratap Singh, a reporter with the news channel, was gunned down again by unidentified people at Devaria in Chhatra district. A band was observed in Chhatra town in protest against the killing. Jharkhand Chief Minister Raghubar Das also condemned the incident and asked the state police to arrest the assailants at the earliest. And as we told you, Bihar has been witnessing a series of crimes for the past few months. Recently, a 20-year-old boy had been killed by a politician's son in Gaya and that incident triggered anger among the opposition parties in the state. 
A delegation of Union Minister Ram Vilas Paswan's LJP and Bihar BJP leaders met President Pranam Mukherjee yesterday and demanded dismissal of the Nitish Kumar government and also a CBI probe into the Gaya incident. The delegation also demanded imposition of President's rule in the state. In a three-page memorandum submitted to the President, the delegation, led by Chirag Paswan, raised concerns over the worsening law and order in the state. Earlier this week, Chirag Paswan had met Union Home Minister Radnath Singh and sought imposition of President's rule in Bihar at the earliest. सामूहिक हत्या जो हो रही है सत्ता के संरक्षण में ये हत्याएं हो रही है हम लोगों का कहना ये था कि उसकी जांच कराइए और अविलंब आप महामहिम राज्यपाल महोदय से एक वहाँ की अद्यतन स्थिति जो लॉ एंड ऑर्डर की है वो छिन्न विच्छिन्न हो गया है छत विछत हो गया है अविलंब मंगाएं और आवश्यकता पड़े तो उस पर जो भी आप सम्यक कार्रवाई हो सकता है वो कार्रवाई करें तमाम इन बातों का संज्ञान देते हुए लोक जनशक्ति पार्टी की तरफ से प्रमुखता से इस बात की मांग की गई और हम लोगों ने राष्ट्रपति जी को भी लिखित रूप में ज्ञापन दिया और उसमें मांग की है कि अब उचित समय आ गया है प्रदेश में राष्ट्रपति शासन लागू कर दिया जाना चाहिए has filed an anticipatory bail petition in the district court the petition is in connection with the recovery of liquor bottles from her house during a search the matter has been posted for hearing on monday manorama devi's lawyer said that she will not surrender before the court she has been absconding ever since the raids her counsel further claimed that she had been implicated in the case as the allegations levied against her are false the counsel also said she was not named accused in the fir in connection with the liquor bottle recovery case Now a day after her suspension from JDU the excise department sealed her residence in connection with the recovery of liquor bottles as the police stepped up search for the legislator who could not be traced earlier a case was registered against her husband Bindi Yadav and son Rocky Yadav in connection with the seizure of liquor bottles Manorama Devi's property has also been attached Moving on the government is contemplating to empower the anti terror investigating agency the NIA Now the center plans to allow it to probe in foreign countries if there is any attack on Indians as well as Indian assets. The Home Ministry is planning to amend the National Investigation Agency Act enacted in 2008 after the 2611 Mumbai terror attack to give additional powers to the agency mandated to investigate all terror related cases. Now as per the proposal the NIA will be given powers to investigate in foreign soil with of course the permission of the host government. since there have been instances of attacks on indians and indian assets like foreign missions in the past pti is quoting sources as saying that a note for the union cabinet is being prepared and once that is cleared the amendments will be tabled before parliament for its note before it is included in the nia act the nia may also be given special powers to keep eyes on activities of modules of middle east terror group the islamic state also pakistan based terror groups to ensure any attempt to harm india will be detected well in advance also the nia may be authorized through the amendment of the act to commute the charge of death penalty to life imprisonment in plea bargaining cases news now from haryana the prakash singh committee probing the role of the police and civil administration officials during the jhart reservation stir has submitted its report to the state government pointing towards negligence on part of certain officials in controlling the situation the committee has castigated over 90 officers including ias ips officers besides various state guard officers for lapses on their part detailing the situation during the height of the violence that took place in haryana in february the committee said that the police officials ran away instead of taking action while judicial officers rattled by the rampage even took off their name plates outside their houses to save themselves from the attacks the committee examined as many as 143 video footages pertaining to the arson during the jhart agitation it will also submit over 10 hours of video recorded statements to the home department of the state for further necessary action after receiving the report chief minister manohar lal khattar said the government would examine it and take appropriate action at the earliest इस रिपोर्ट का अध्ययन हम करेंगे और रिपोर्ट अध्ययन करने के बाद जो भी रिपोर्ट के अंदर रिकमेंडेशन की गई होंगी उनको हम पालन करेंगे उनका सख्ती से मीन वाइल द हरियाणा गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो नोटिफाइड एन एक्ट फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग कोटा इन सर्विसेज एंड एडमिशन टू एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर सर्टन बैकवर्ड क्लासेज इन द स्टेट 
called the Haryana Backward Classes Reservation in Services and Admission in Educational Institutions Act 2016. It provides 10% reservation in services for class 3 and 4 posts and 6% quota in class 1 and 2 posts to the Jats, Jat Sikhs, Roars, Bishnois, the Tyagis, Mullah Jat or Muslim Jats in Schedule 3. It also provides for 10% quota in admissions to educational institutions for people of these castes. And moving on to neighbouring Nepal, in fresh trouble for the government, a coalition of seven Madhesi parties and around two dozen ethnic groups will restart their protest from today onwards. They are demanding more rights, adequate representation and re-demarcation of the provincial boundary. The Madhesis will launch protest rally in Ratna Park of Kathmandu from today and will sit in front of the Secretariat for an indefinite period starting Sunday. Over 50 people, remember, lost their lives during previous agitation by the Madhesis, which also saw blockade of Nepal's all trading points with India, resulting in huge shortage of essential commodities and also souring the Indo-Nepal ties. Mostly of Indian origin, the Madhesis want the government to rewrite the constitution so that the concept of secularism, identity-based proportional inclusive representation and federal democratic republic status to Nepal could be constitutionally ensured. And in some other international news, supporters of top Hezbollah commander Mustafa Badruddin have called for revenge of his killing. He was killed in Syria on Tuesday and his funeral was attended by thousands of people. The killing now comes at a time when the fragile truce in Syria is already on the verge of collapse. Thousands of people attended the funeral of high-ranking Hezbollah commander Mustafa Badruddin in Beirut on Friday, who was killed in Syria this week. Draped in a yellow Hezbollah flag, Badruddin's coffin was carried through the streets as thousands of supporters called for revenge for his death. Fifty-five-year-old Badruddin was killed in an explosion in the Syrian capital of Damascus on Tuesday. His death comes as a major blow to the militant group since its military chief was killed in 2008. In a statement, the Hezbollah said it was investigating the nature of the explosion. While Israel declined to comment on whether it is involved in the killing, the White House has clarified that no aircraft from the US-led coalition were in the area of Damascus on the day when Badruddin was reportedly killed. So we've seen the reports of his death. I can't independently confirm them. Um, and the, I guess the thing that I can confirm is that um, there were no US or coalition uh, aircraft uh, in the area where he was reported to be killed. But I, uh, but I can't further uh, uh, confirm the report. Badruddin was a key suspect in the 2005 assassination in Beirut of Lebanese ex-premier Rafiq Hariri and was most wanted by Israel. He was supervising the group's involvement in Syria's civil war since Hezbollah fighters joined the battles, along with President Bashar al-Assad's forces against militant groups trying to remove him from power. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And some more international stories in this quick world wrap. The United States has said India is now eligible to enter the exclusive nuclear supplies group after meeting missile technology control regime requirements. The statement by the US spokesperson comes amid reports that China and Pakistan are jointly opposed to India's bid exclusive club membership. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has yet again accused Pakistan of waging an undeclared war against his country. Delivering a lecture at the Royal United Services Institute in London, President Ghani also said that the Tehrike Taliban based in Pakistan was the greatest threat to the region and expressed frustration over little progress in peace talks and gathering of foreign fighters in Afghanistan. After holding the first official meeting with its ministers, the Brazilian interim president Michel Temer has promised to develop the country's economy. Temer said his government's new priorities would be to create a leaner government, balance finances and root out corruption from the country. Meanwhile, protests continued in Rio de Janeiro against the impeachment of Dilma Rousseff, which the supporters call a coup. 
And that's all we have time for in this bulletin. Thanks for watching.